project manager no one asked for has returned. It's Monday morning, I'm not in the yard. I'm on the side of a cliff looking at a plot of land. I wanted some inspiration to start my week. So I came up to this plot and I'm envisioning all the different houses that could be built on it. Still need to discuss price, but having a plot of land like this close to the sea where you can hear it, but not actually be on a beach, be high up with a view. This is my dream right here. It's not to say that this plot of land is the plot of land where the dream will come true, but I needed some inspiration to set the week off right. Without getting too ahead of myself, the sub base here is predominantly rock. With the square footage here, I think it would definitely have to be spread over three levels and the orientation of the units would be all of the rooms are glass fronted on one side and living areas, bedrooms, kitchens would have a view of this. Anyway, enough dreaming going to start my day and do some work to make this come true. Of course, the work at the refurbishment project carries on in my absence. On the loft level, we are installing the second layer of 15 mil soundboard. In the master ensuite, Chris is cutting down sections of ply and fitting them to the wall. This is the first layer in the wall buildup. On the external walls, we need to fit the 12mm plasterboard with 60mm insulation already attached to the back. On top of this, we'll fit cement board later. I have a meeting in a couple of hours at a local real estate agent's. You notice I say real estate, normally we say estate agent, but in St. Lucia we say real estate because the... Yes? Yes, ma'am? I don't know, the thing just gone on my... What's wrong, man? I don't know, the light on my camera just gone. The light on your camera gone? Because you take off too much picture, that's why. Oh. I'm joking. <laughs> Show me. Okay, what's wrong with you? It's the light. Your phone's overheating, I can feel it. Leave your phone out the sun. Leave it inside to cool down. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll put it off. All right, ma'am. Real estate agent, as they say in St. Lucia, because they took the lead from America on that one. I'm going to be having a discussion with them on Asheville Heights. The website's going to get revamped. I haven't paid any attention to that website in a long time. But coming back to St. Lucia has sparked my interest and inspired me to push on this development. I don't know the local market here. When I planned Asheville Heights, there was no such thing as Airbnb and the market has changed significantly after COVID. So I'm going to take the advice of a local expert and I've made myself a little Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to write down the names of each unit, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, do they have a balcony, do they have a pool? I've created everything as drop down menus. So when I'm in the meeting, I can just make any notes I need to. I'm going to write down rough square footages. What does a buyer expect in this St. Lucian market? and based on comparables, what do people expect when buying here and what do I need to do to make this the go-to development? I'm going to print off all the plans. In short, I make use of the meeting and absorb as much information as possible. Then I'm going to go back to the drawing board with the scheme and redesign it. Of course, all that redesign will be a separate video. This week in the yard, Flo is not in. Terry has organized some help for us. We only have two trains, unfortunately. arrived at my meeting. It's like the third time I've changed today. I'm starting to feel like Beyonce. It's very hot. Have a seat, please. Have you worked for us before? Those are the signs for MP Moran's, which I told you about a while back with our new partnership where everybody who uses them for their supplies Moran's will offer a ready mix concrete and pump hire service and we'll be the ones who undertake the works they took a while to make but they are huge i'm very much looking forward to seeing them plastered across the side of the watford branch had a very long meeting with the real estate agents. One of the partners in the firm comes from a finance background. And as you know, your boy is turning into a numbers man. I let them know 
what I want from the development, but I also let them know how I felt and the parameters around it. I'm not being unrealistic. In St. Lucia, it's very difficult to price property because things are really worth as much as people are willing to pay for them. However, this company have began to dissect information, take historic information and begin to plug it all into spreadsheets to get average costs. And what was really interesting, and this happens in London as well, there are small bubbles in developments where people achieve higher sales prices. Now, one of those is right next to a golf course. And the reason they're in a bubble is because they have a golf course in another country. All the people who are members of the other golf course are flocking to St. Lucia to houses within this golf course. It's just trying to understand how that bubble is created but at the same time not getting carried away with yourself and think oh yeah I can achieve a premium fortunately with this platform I'm in a position where I can create some excitement around a build what I do in the Caribbean hopefully I'll be able to document the entire process and share it with everyone who follows on the journey a lot of the skills are transferable just because it's in St Lucia or the Caribbean it doesn't mean that you can apply um, those skills broadly in the UK or any other country. I do feel like I'm falling behind with my work in the UK. At the same time, I'm trying to plan and prepare um, for my mum's birthday party, which is on Wednesday. So I'm going to get myself some rest and I'll be up early at around 5 a.m. The key to any successful business and a business's number one asset is the people within it. Once you find the right people and build your team, you need to communicate with them and manage them. That's why I use Connect Team, a complete mobile first solution to employee management for a deskless workforce. It's perfect for a company like ours who have team members out in the field on a daily basis. It works for all size companies in all industries, construction, field servicing, retail, food and beverage, manufacturing, and security. For instance, for staff who are not based in the yard every day and visit multiple sites, they can use time clock to clock in and clock out at the touch of a button. That way, we know where all our employees are at any one time and the hours they've worked. You can also use the task management feature to set up to-do lists for your staff, which they can see from their mobile phone and tick off in real time. 80% of the world's global workforce is made up of frontline non-desk employees. Computers and emails are not for everyone, so Connect Team steps in to bridge the gap and provides an all-in-one employee management app. It's easy to set up for both employees and managers, and employees can access the app on their phone from anywhere at any time. There are scheduling tools to help optimize shifts and allocate resources effectively, and forms enable data collection for performance evaluations, identify find areas for improvement. You can automate all of this to save time and limit mistakes and spend more time working on your business and not in it. So download the app and click the link in the description for a free 14-day trial version with no credit card info needed. It's Tuesday, I'm not in the yard. It's 5 a.m which is 9 a.m. in the UK, so I feel like I've got a lion. I'm heading on the road nice and early to try and get a gym session in, and then I have a meeting with a structural engineer. Not my normal <laughs> commute to the gym. Back in the yard, we're preparing for trains, which should be in on Wednesday and Thursday. Terry's got his eye on everything, got it under control. Let's see how he's getting on. This is your second week of Terry Tuesdays. Tomorrow is a sand train that we offload and haul for a customer of ours. There's some quite bad rain this morning, so we need to make sure that the bay's nice and tidy for tomorrow. Quite a bit of Type 1 going out in the last couple of days, so we are running out of Type 1 very quickly. So I'm talking to Aggregate Industries about bringing in some more trains to Type 1 next week. Provisionally, they've given us two trains. We've got a little order coming for some more Jersey barriers, so we've moved concrete blocks, dried up the road plates in order to get the Jersey barrier moulds put on the moulds are over there. The boys will do that once they've finished off preparing the train line for tomorrow. They've got to go along, scrape the top of the rails with the bad weather. You get the muck sit on top of the rails, you just scrape all that off. Getting a little bit busy on the concrete, uh, so volumetrics are in or out all day long. Other than that, just general sort of yard maintenance again. 
always something to do, especially this weather. This weather really doesn't help us at all around this yard. So yeah, standard Tuesdays. Just had an email from our CFO, Donica, about cash flow, saying that we have a pinch at the moment. And I'm like, how can there possibly be a pinch? So I've spoken to Terry. Two of the tippers are parked up today. That's because the drivers are on holiday. Two volumetrics are parked up. That's because one of the drivers called in sick. So there had been one volumetric parked up. The entire fleet's out working. Granted, we have priced a lot of work and that work hasn't started because it seems in the construction industry at the moment, everybody wants to wait and see what happens. I've come to this conclusion, which stacks up and makes sense. We have an invoice financing facility. We generate invoices. We are paid 85% of that immediately. Now at the moment, we are doing a lot of work, which is profitable, but it doesn't generate high amounts of revenue. We had a job where we would turn up with a load of type one, let's say for argument's sake, we invoiced the client 100 quid, but then 80 quid of that was cost. So we really only made 20 quid, but then we'd take the muck. For 100 quid but then we tipped it for let's say 60 quid from those two transactions we would have made 60 quid of profit but the work we're doing at the moment we're not delivering material we're taking product from somewhere and then we're tipping it somewhere and we're getting 80 quid we're making a lot more profit however we're not generating revenue to draw down against and in previous months it was high revenue but also high cost. I never thought I'd be in a position where making more profit causes a cash flow problem. We need to batten down the hatches and talk to a couple of suppliers. We're always transparent with them. That's why you need relationships. We're gonna send them our managed accounts for January. They can see that it's a short-term problem and they'll support us through this period. This is a bulletproof coffee. It's a espresso and it has coconut oil in it. So. This is my work area for the next couple of hours before I go to the meeting with the structural engineer. When I got the email, it bothered me, like it really hit me hard. I had to sit down, assess, before I called anyone or did anything or took any action, I broke it down. I realized there was a solution. I made the calls I needed to, and I've decided on the action that we're taking, and I'll reassess it in a couple of days. Turned up for a meeting, and next door, there's a construction yard. Got a skip lorry, that's a classic Scania there. Not the 4 by 2 configuration that we're used to. Slightly bigger lorry. Good to see so much industry happening in St. Lucia. I just finished a meeting with my engineer. This is the man who told me not to put swimming pools on the top floor of buildings because of the cost structurally. But just the cost. But it's possible. He's saving me from from going down a rabbit hole as I tend to do sometimes. Watch this space. We got you, we got you covered. Mm. On a road again. Mumsy has turned camera woman. Going down south to run a couple of errands. We are one day out from Mumsy being the birthday girl. My structural meeting went very well. We have a plan in place to do a pre-app, which hopefully will give me some guidance and some steer on what the DCA, which is the St. Lucian um, planning department, what they will accept and what they'll like. And if they don't like what I've done, hopefully they'll give me a steer and we can push forward the plans for Asheville Heights. That's the plan anyway. Asheville Heights. Asheville Heights. Wow. You want to live there? Too high. Too high. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. <laughs> it's Wednesday morning. Not in the yard. It's half five and I'm heading to the gym. I woke up this morning and drawings had come through for the refurbishment project from my friend Johnny up in Scotland. This means we know exactly what's happening in the room and we can do any infrastructure work necessary with all of the electrics. And now a train full of sand is arriving. Let's get it offloaded. work going on 
There's a new highway and a new bridge being built. So this area is hustling and bustling with plenty of machines and trucks in and out all day long trying to get this new bridge and the surrounding roads finished. Quickly stopped to have a look what's going on. I saw some work happening in a clearing. The barge pulls up, there's a machine on top. The trucks reverse in and get loaded on the barge and then the trucks take the material directly off the barge. Water is being spread for dust prevention. This is not the final surface and until such time as the final surface is in place, uh, this needs to be done every day. In the city of Castries, which is the capital of St. Lucia, there's a container terminal, another container here. Containers are offloaded here and loaded back onto ships. Next to it, there's a place where the massive cruise ships come in. And I can see two are in at this present moment. Now that's really good for St. Lucia, but bad for me because there's a lot of traffic in town. Whenever a cruise ship is in, it's always very busy. People are collecting tourists, giving them tours to have a day trip to learn about the history of St. Lucia and learn a little bit more about the people. Looks like somebody ran out just before the pump. Good thing there's some people on hand to give some help. That's a classic right there. I drive past this every day and I just respect the hustle. There's a clothing store here which has taken two 40-foot containers. They've spray painted the outside of them and they've modified them so they can sell clothing right on the highway in a prime location. So I just wanted to have a look close up, see what they had on offer. They, they, these clothes aren't really my style. That's not really for me. But and they've got the glass doors on the front of the container. And you know that I'm a man that loves containers. It's excellent to see people thinking outside of the box. This is actually recycling at the same time and really getting their hustle on and trying to make some money. It's fantastic. Oh, I can see they're air conditioned. If you look up there, take a quick look inside. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> and they're in the middle of their social media campaign, promoting their business. Love that. It's time to close the laptop, have a shower, spruce myself up, get changed. It's Mumsy's birthday. Today at the refurbishment project, we had a monumentous day. I told you a while back about the steel work which was needed on the ground floor as a support for the ribboned staircase. <laughs> To lift the heavier steels in place, we are using two lift stackers in unison and then using nuts and bolts to secure. Once the main steels are in place, we then fit the cross beams between them. It's Wednesday night. I'm a mumsy's 70th birthday. As the only child, I felt it necessary to try and put on a decent soiree. So I rented this villa and I got an events company to put on an event that hopefully my mum will enjoy. My auntie's handled the guest list, so there'll be loads of friends and family that I haven't seen in many years, and hopefully my mum has a great night. I know my mum's gonna be watching this, so I just wanna say, happy birthday, mummy. I hope you enjoy tonight, and thank you for everything. Thursday morning, I'm not in the yard. Got in a little bit later, so I'm up a little bit later. There was no alarm clock. I was just woken up by the sound of the sea. As you know, Flo isn't in this week, so Terry's been getting in other operators, and we've experienced some challenges with the train. It's 11.45. We've got a train in currently of sand and gravel. The train was about to arrive at 7.30. Didn't arrive till nearly 9.40. The issue with that is they're struggling to extend the offload time. When a train has gone past that way, cleared the signal here, but it hasn't cleared the signal at the far end, so we can't actually shunt our train at the moment. Our supplier has asked us if we can clear the gravel from the train before we clear the sand, because they can re-divert the sand easier than they can re-divert the gravel. Unfortunately for them, we need the sand more than we need the gravel. So we're a bit of a juggler in that. We try and get offload what we can, which only we have to offload the product that we need more. Reason being is sand is less locally available than the gravel is. So while we've got the sand on the train, we've tried to prioritize that, but we have to help them. Quite a lot going on in the yard today. Sam and Liam are having a little bit of training on some concrete cubes. Sam was our trainer with us previously, but he is having a bit of a refresher and Liam is his first course. A little bit busy on the concrete today, which is nice. Tippers are absolutely flat out and so are the grab, so good day.
and we're trialing a lorry today. So four axle, eight wheel, DAF. It's got a special body on it in a lovely bright color. Ben is being shown around it and we're gonna be trialing this for two weeks to see how it works. DAF said they felt this will be a good vehicle for us. We're gonna put it through its paces and see if it's something that may come in handy in the future. You saw some weeks back, we were talking about the roof we did a very long time ago and they wanted us to come and fix the roof and they were saying it was under warranty but we could see mechanical damage to the roof and we were asking them what happened, who had been on the roof. They've come back and sent an email to say that the roof is sorted, they brought someone in and they managed to repair the fiberglass. So there'll be no water coming into their house and we're gonna have to assess in the future if there are any problems, how we approach them. doing a bit of truck spotting today. I was on the highway, saw a couple of DAFs and Scanyas, a couple of man lorries, the usual suspects. And I've been seeing a couple of these American trucks around. And I also saw a new one. It was H-O-W-O. -O. Ho, ho, ho. And there was another one, Futon or something like that. And that's not like the bed that's a sofa at the same time. I'm trying to work out what all the payloads are because they've got massive tipping bodies on them. I think that this is the same brand as Optimus Prime, and they've clearly said in the window that it's not for sale. It's got a very nice double exhaust stack, some sort of B-Tech cousin of Optimus Prime. There's a lot of checker plate, stainless steel. That's a big old body on it. It's got the greedy boards, a favorite of mine, and an easy sheet. That spring there is something that I'm not used to seeing. There's some alloy rims. What? Mud guards. It can tow as well. Hmm, looks like we've got a couple of problems here but the truck doesn't look like it's going anywhere. But all in all, it's pretty clean. Okay, let's have a look at the tipping ram. Really want to get in there and shake the prop, but I don't feel like rolling around in the dirt. All in all, considering that this truck is so close to the sea and there's a sea blast, there's very minimal rust on it. I don't think it's roadworthy at the moment, but whoever owns it wants everybody to know that it is not for sale. So, that's it for Optimus Prime's B-Tech cousin. So I'm at the Pitons. I've come to see one friend Kirk at Blueberry Construction. Come to see his build, 36,000 square foot villa. Fortunately, Kirk's on the other side of the island, sat at his desk at his offices. We're trying to read it, which is going to be a standalone video. It's Friday morning. We're running in. Time is 5.08. I'm trying to beat the traffic in Cacheries, the capital and head down south. I see a lot of people exercising while the temperature is a bit lower. It's 26 degrees. And what I'm also seeing is tankers transporting water going up and down on the highway. There is a problem with water currently. People with tractor units have also purchased themselves these tankers and they help with drinking water. And generally in St. Lucia, everyone has a large water tank, especially places like hotels and large residences so they can store this water in a worst case scenario like today. St. Lucia is a volcanic island. It was a volcano once upon a time very long ago and now it's dormant. I'm down at the Sulphur Springs. There are concrete bays built and this is the actual real life sulphur that comes from the dormant volcano and it runs through all these little small pools. There's great benefits of health from bathing within this sulfur, great for your skin, body, mind, and your well-being. So I come down here nice and early. There's no one here yet. So I'm really gonna enjoy this and try and soak it up. When I was young, I was able to go up here and do all types of investigating, but now they've 
sectioned it off. Restricted area. So I'm going to respect the rules. The water is so warm and so nice. This is somewhere to have a reset and try to, not ensure because you can never do that, but try to refresh your mind and help you have clearer vision so you can make better decisions. Definitely worth the early start. This is one of the only times ever when I've been out with no clothes on and I don't mind it raining. Makes it even more refreshing. This rock here would be great to blast, crush and screen. This is before the barbs. The sulfur flows. All the way down here, underneath, and the baths are down in that area. Had breakfast down by the pitons, joined by some lovely local birds. I'm meant to be trying to refresh and regroup before I head back, but some emails came through and the cash flow I told you about a couple of days ago, I'm just trying to work through that cash flow and assist the accounts team and the operations team with talking to suppliers. I want to talk about taco hours. Now I can see how some would say that standing here isn't the right time to start talking about driver hours and tackle grass. <laughs> it just came to my mind. And in St. Lucia, there are no tackle cards, no tackle brakes, and there are no rules around driver hours. Now, all the operators of trucks are expected to maintain their trucks and they're expected to act responsibly and take adequate rest, but this is not something which is governed. Hey, what's happening? What are you doing? How are you doing, you all right? My mum's 70th, he did a great job. Give me the phone, let's go, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Come on, chop, chop, look at the God. Because everyone in St. Lucia takes a lot of pride in their vehicles. They're all looked after and serviced very well. Some of them look like they need a bit of a clean, but who am I to say that anyone's lorries need a clean? tunnel. When I was young and I used to come to St. Lucia, there were no tunnels to drive under. But this is one of the new ones which has um, created a new way to connect the capital cacheries um, with other parts of the island. Rather than going up the large um, hill called the Morn, you can come through this area. Also years ago when I used to come to St. Lucia, when there were roadworks, they were sectioned off and people used to go around it, but now I can see that they've implemented traffic management. There are people with walkie-talkies helping guide road users around any of the obstacles. So everywhere I turn in St. Lucia, someone's either trying to build, improve, repair, upgrade, whether that be entrepreneurship, guys by the side of the road selling the coconuts. Like you saw the other day, they've got a container and they're importing clothes or making clothes, quarries. It seems to be really busy here. So the cogs are turning. Is there a place for your boy Asheville? That is the question, other than Asheville Heights. Cruise ships are in today at the port, and one must be all the way from England, establishment who do family holidays for people in the UK. It's a uh, Thompson, I mean Tui. Great for them, they get to see the island, and great for the island because it generates even more economic growth. You might be wondering how cruise ships so big are coming into such a small port. As part of the British Empire, the port of St. Lucia was the third most important port in the world because of the depth of it. The ports are extremely deep here. I've never been up to my plot of land on an evening. I came to see the neighbor and have a chat. And while I was standing on his porch, I noticed the sunset and what a view 
my plot would have, especially with the height I want to take it to. I'm doing all of this and I'm trying to move it forward and I get a call. The work we're doing for one of the majors delivering material in, which comes in on the train, the work has all stopped. One of our drivers in their depot has jumped out of the lorry in Crocs. You can do everything in your power to try to make things work. You can buy the best kit in the world. You can put all the method statements, more managers than the premiership. What can you do when people start doing things like that and lose you work at a time when it's not busy out there? Now we have to go explaining why the driver did it. How on earth do I know? I understand people make mistakes. I understand people forget, but come on, man. Like you're a professional. You've been doing this for years and now all the work is lost. Ah, oh, man. And that's it for Friday. It's Saturday and I'm not in the yard and a project manager no one asked for has returned. This is a site I visited last week and the owner of the construction company, we had a little chat and he said I could pop by whenever I wanted to. So I am doing just that. It's the development of a single dwelling, very spacious, loads of large windows, gonna let loads of natural light in. Has a fantastic view of the sea and uh, landscaping of St. Lucia. Very nice grand entrance. The structure is concrete and concrete blocks. The guys are building a ply frame because they're gonna pour the stairs out of concrete early next week. We can begin to see a first fix of electrical. There's plasterboard on some of the walls. This looks like a waste pipe and some of the pipes are being tested for pressure up here. We can see the timber frames going in place. I believe this is where services are gonna run. The waste from a bathroom upstairs. It's gonna be a really nice living area. Looking at the back of the house, you get an idea of how big it is. There's a bit of backyard space. Up on the first floor. Look at the size of this window. Oh, and we have the master suite. Huge windows, high ceilings, nice little balcony area here. Bathroom, we can see the pipe work. First fix is in place. And this has got to be the wardrobe. In a lot of areas, the plasterboard is on already and we have base coats. So it looks like the guys are sequencing the works with exactly what they can do now to get it done to move the project on. So we walk over to the other side, right? Okay. So this is where the fuse boards are going to be. Oh, look at this. Wow. Spacious bedroom. Ah, this must be a Jack and Jill. So one bedroom here. Yep, there's a bathroom. Telltale signs here. I can see shower mixer and shower head going on the wall. And then straight away, another bedroom. Sockets at television height. The project manager no one asked for, walking around the site, working it out by the services. Another bathroom, which is an ensuite. Ooh, look at that. It's 29 degrees outside. And in here, it's cool. I'm not talking about cool like, like it's a cool thing, I mean temperature wise. And another great view, another balcony. Plenty of indoor space, plenty of outdoor space. Lovely breeze, nice and cool, fantastic location. Big windows. Locally, I can see tankers still filling up with water. So there may still be a couple of challenges. Download the app and click the link in the description for a free 14 day trial version with no credit card info needed. But that's it from the project manager that nobody asked for and Asheville Weekly episode 180. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see an Asheville video you may not have seen before and click down here for last week's episode, which was number 179.